Hey, welcome back everyone. Today's objectives are to identify the process of RNA editing and how it is beneficial for the process of making a protein and identify the parts of gene regulation and the importance of regulating a gene. First, let's take a look at RNA editing. Uh, we have our DNA strand here and this is our um, copy. It's our messenger RNA copy. Uh, that is done through transcription but before that uh, RNA copy leaves the cell we're going to want to trim it up a little bit and the reason is is because we have two parts that make up the DNA or the copy which are exons and introns. Introns are sequences that are not used for coding a protein so they are what I call fluff. They're not needed nucleotides. The exons are sequences that are expressed in the synthesis of uh, protein making and uh, these are called exons and uh, these are the things that we want to keep. So before we leave we don't want to take the whole entire copy out because we would be carrying a message that is very big and a lot of it is unneeded and that would waste energy and energy is precious to the cell so what we're going to do is we're going to use proteins uh, to cleave or to cut out uh, all the introns within that messenger RNA until we get the messenger RNA only filled with exons or the things that we need to make that protein once that is done, it's going to go out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore and into the cytoplasm for translation to begin. Let's take a look at gene regulation in a prokaryotic cell. This is the turning on or off of the transcription of a gene. That's what gene regulation is all about. So up here we have a strip of DNA uh, and what's going to take place is transcription Notice we have RNA polymerase there, and when transcription happens, the RNA polymerase reads the, the nucleotides that are in this piece of DNA and creates that message. Uh, however, the only time we want to create certain messages is when we need that type of protein to be made. So this whole process is basically how to turn on or off the making of a protein. All right, we have an operon, which is a group of structural genes that are controlled and transcribed as a single message. And the operon for this is uh, going to be up here within the DNA. We have the promoter region, and that's where the polymerase binds. It's right here. Uh, within that promoter region is something called the Tata box. And it's a component within the promoter region that consists of sequences of uh, adenine and thymine bases in the TA, TA form. So thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine, and it keeps going and going and going. Uh, if you think of this as a landing strip for an airplane, uh, the airplane is going to look for the lights that light up the landing strip. Well, the lights happen to be th uh, thymine and adenine in this case. So they're going to just line the promoter region that just tells the plane where to land or the polymerase where to bind. Uh, next is our operator which is right here. It's like an on and off switch. And uh, we have something called the LAC repressor. Uh, the LAC repressor is just a protein that is binding here and when it's bound that just means that uh, we're not going to make any proteins or any messenger RNA to make the protein for that specific gene. So this is the way it would happen. Um, the LAC repressor is searching for the sugar lactose. And if there's lactose in the cell, it's going to bind to the active site right here in the enzyme. And when it binds there, shown over here, what's going to happen is 
that lacquer presser is going to change shape and fall off the operator, uh, the operator, the on and off switch. When that happens, the RNA polymerase can then make messenger RNA, which will go outside of the cell and make proteins. We're going to take a look at a video that hopefully will help clear this up and better explain it. Uh, hopefully you got a pretty good introduction to gene regulation. systems, a repressor molecule prevents gene expression by binding to the upstream controlling region. Lactose is the lac operon inducer molecule. After first appearing in the cellular environment, lactose passively enters the E. coli cell and binds to the repressor molecule. This binding releases the repressor from the controlling region. At this point, RNA polymerase can begin transcription of the operon. Here we show two of the three lac operon genes being transcribed into mRNA. Ribosomes then bind to the mRNA and the two proteins are translated. The first protein is beta-galactosidase, which breaks down lactose into two simple sugars. The second protein is permease, a membrane-bound protein. When embedded in the cell membrane, Permease functions to provide a direct route for the lactose outside the cell to be imported into the cell. This import occurs at a much greater rate than the passive transfer we first observed. Because translation continues inside the cell, other permease proteins become embedded in the membrane. This further increases the rate at which lactose enters the cell. Beta-galactosidase breaks the cellular lactose into the simple sugars glucose and galactose. Once its concentration is greatly reduced, the lactose bound to the repressor are released. At this point, the repressor again binds to the controlling region and gene expression is halted. For all inducible systems, like the lac operon, it is the interaction of the repressor and inducer molecules that mediate gene expression. Alright, so the key to both the video and this uh, picture is to realize that the body doesn't always want to make proteins. The only time they want to make the proteins is when uh, certain things need to be done. In the animation that you just saw, lactose was present within the cell, so when lactose is present, it needs to be broken down. So then we would want to make those proteins. Uh, you saw on the video that once all the lactose was broken down and lactose was not present in the cell then the uh, the lac repressor went back and bound to the operator and basically turned off the production of making messenger RNA to help make that protein. Today's objectives were to take a look at the process of RNA editing and RNA editing happens when uh, DNA is split open and uh, we're making a messenger RNA copy. That copy has two parts. It has introns and exons. Introns are fluff. They're 
nucleotides that are not needed to make the protein. The exons is what we need, so what we do is we cut those exons out, uh, recombine them, and then take them out into the cytoplasm where we can start translation. Gene regulation, on the other hand, is a way to regulate a gene or to turn on and off a gene so that um, these proteins are not being made when we don't need them. So uh, in our example, we looked at lactose. When lactose was uh, present, we needed to make that protein that would break down lactose. And when lactose is not present, then we need to turn off uh, that gene production of that protein. If you guys have any questions, I know that these processes are a little bit more complex than what we've been dealing with. Uh, please bring those questions to class.